Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review Spillover, Animal Infections and the Next Human Pandemic by David Quammen. This book was published in 2012 by W.W. W. Norton, and the paperback comes in at 592 pages. Before I start speaking about this book, I did want to very quickly address why I picked it up. At the time I am filming this, the world is in the middle of the COVID-19 slash coronavirus pandemic. Of course, I say we're in the middle of it when we really don't have enough information to know when it's going to end. I know many people People at the moment I'm filming this might not want to pick up a book like this, and that is totally understandable. I am the kind of person who feels a whole lot better if I'm able to research a situation and understand as much about it as possible, arming myself with information, if you will, hence why this book appealed. I wanted to say this up front so that A, if you're watching this video when it goes up while we're still in this crisis and you think it's going to make you anxious in any kind of a way, you can either save this video for later or skip it entirely. But also B, so that you can understand why I choose to focus on certain topics a little bit more than others in this review. I just wanted to provide a little bit of context. Those things being said, let's talk about the book. This is an epic work of nonfiction that discusses what are called zoonoses, which are diseases or infections that transfer from the grander animal world to humans. Quammen takes on this large topic via smaller discussions on particular illnesses. He uses them as case studies to ascertain how the causal viruses are spread to humans, both in terms of biology, how do these viruses adapt to be able to infect the human body, and in terms of location, how do they find their way into the human body. He looks at what these zoonoses do to a human body. He looks at how the human body reacts after it has been infected. He looks at all these different outbreak situations and talks about how they were handled, or in some cases, how they're still being handled. He talks a lot about the work of scientists, how they go about figuring out where these viruses came from in the first place, which involves a lot of investigative work. He talks about what we know so far about the different diseases he covers in this book. And most frighteningly, he points at the fact that we have so much left to learn, especially because a lot of viruses that will be a problem in the future we have no idea what they are right now in the present. While discussing the specific cases that he brings up in this book, the specific infections that he chooses to focus on, he is continuously adding in information about zoonoses in general, namely why we're seeing so many of these crop up in our modern worlds. During this novel coronavirus pandemic, I have heard a lot of talk, I'm assuming you've heard some of it as well, about this being some sort of revenge on the human species, like retribution, divine or otherwise as if this is Mother Earth's attempt to shake us off like a wet dog. In this book, Kwaman acknowledges that people tend to like to romanticize things in that way, but he actually theorizes that the reason why we're seeing more and more of these is because of human actions. In a number of ways that he details in the book, we as humans are bringing ourselves closer and closer to nature. It is both a side effect of the modern world in which we live, but also a result of the ongoing decisions that humans are making. It is making these types of crossovers more or less inevitable. As part of his research for this book, Kwaman traveled to all different places throughout the world, all related back to one of the ailments he discusses in one way or another. He talks to so many scientists, as well as people who have been infected with some of these zoonoses, people who have recovered. Just the amount of research that you know had to go into this book is staggering. It is a nearly 600 page book after all. Now, as I mentioned before, Kwaman does discuss a number of diseases and infections throughout this book, and uses them as case studies. A good number of them have very recognizable names, Ebola, HIV, foot and mouth disease, Bet you didn't know that was a zoonosis. But he also does discuss a lot of lesser known infections, such as the Hendra virus infection, which is the one that he leads the entire book off with. Of course, given the global situation we're dealing with in the year 2020, the one I found most notable was SARS. If you didn't already know this, SARS emerged in 2002, it burned out by 2004, but it was an infection caused by a coronavirus. A different coronavirus than the one we're dealing with right now, but a coronavirus nonetheless, and they infect the body in similar ways, it seems like. They're both respiratory ailments. In the section that Kwaman discusses SARS, he talks about why SARS didn't spread in the way that it possibly could have, which was a mixture of an appropriate early aggressive response and also a whole lot of good luck. Eerily enough, it's at this point in the text 
that he starts talking about the next big one that scientists talk about in the same way that seismologists talk about the next big earthquake. It is scary how accurate his prediction was about what the next big one will look like and the conditions under which that next big one would be able to spread across our globalized worlds. In the book, he says, Everything nowadays moves around the planet faster, including viruses. If SARS had conformed to the perverse pattern of pre-symptomatic infectivity, its emergence wouldn't be a case history in good luck and effective outbreak response. It would be a much darker story. The much darker story remains to be told, probably not about this virus, but about another. When the next big one comes, we can guess it will likely conform to the same perverse pattern, high infectivity preceding notable symptoms that will help it move through cities and airports like an angel of death. Did you get chills? Because I sure did. If you are interested in picking up this book exclusively for its relevance to our current situation, then chapters 32 through 40 are what you're looking for. If you do choose to take on this book as a whole, however, I do think it has the capacity to teach you a number of different things. Most generally, I think it'll help you get a handle on some of the terminology that's used in discussions about viruses. I'm sure on the news you've heard terms like morbidity rates and fatality rates or a virus being isolated. Those things have been tossed around a lot recently, and if you read this book, you will have a firm understanding of what all of those things mean. I do have to mention something, though. We're halfway into the book before Quammen has the discussion about what a virus is, what its structure is, and how it goes about infecting someone or something. And that conversation is completely separated by like 300 pages from the initial discussion about viruses and how they adapt and how they can adapt to then infect the human body. That organization doesn't make any sense to me at all. Those two conversations belong together. And I can see that he wanted to start out with the mystery of the Hendra virus, because that's going to pull the reader in a lot more. But I would have rather had that intro of the Hendra virus and then all of this information about viruses in general right up front so that I can know all of this as I go through the book. Also, as I mentioned earlier, this book is nearly 600 pages long and it is overflowing with detail. I am a pretty fast reader, and this one took me a long time to get through. I appreciated how thorough he was, but I did notice that he repeated himself several times, so I think at least 50 pages could have been cut. Beyond those small problems, I was so impressed by this book. Quammen presents potentially really hard to understand concepts in such an approachable way. I think he deeply understands that presenting the science within the context of a human story is the best way to get his point across. And I think that's probably why he chose to organize things the way he did, even if it wasn't fully to my liking. He's also just really funny. I was not expecting to be laughing when reading a book about very serious infections, but at so many different points, he had me laughing. He would sometimes word something in just the most hilariously perfect way, or he would slip in a very abrupt, dry joke, and that's exactly my kind of humor. So while the subject matter is very heavy, please be assured that the prose style is not. David Quammen did his graduate studies in literature at Oxford, and he's written 15 total books as of 2020. So you're in the hands of an experienced writer, and it reads that way. He uses clear and evocative language, and his storytelling is so captivating. I won't say that it doesn't feel long. It does feel long. It is long but it's not dry. So those were my thoughts on this well done and unfortunately timely book. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, please feel free to put that in the comment section down below. But you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.